Our last speaker is um, Professor Roger Deedles. He's Professor and Dean Emeritus at the UCLA Fielding School of Public Health and has been in the faculty in the Department of Epidemiology since 1971. Um, he's a world-renowned researcher on HIV and also um, with the NIH Fo UCLA Fogarty Training, and he'll be talking about the UCLA Fogarty Training. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, ni hao ma. <laughs> uh, it's late, so I, I will try not to take too much time. I'd like to start uh, actually with the last slide, if I can figure out how to use it. No, I can't. All right. Uh, uh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> uh, the uh, Fogarty program uh, began in 1988, uh, and China was one of the first uh, countries with which we established a relationship. Uh, and this slide uh, just shows you uh, the number of graduates of the program uh, in each of the countries with uh, which we have uh, cooperated, uh, two of them, Brazil and uh, Hungary, are uh, not in, in uh, Asia. Uh, uh, wait a let me go, yeah, uh, okay, yeah. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about uh, how we uh, organize the uh, Fogarty program. Uh, we go through a fairly rigorous selection pro uh, process, uh, and uh, the selection is made jointly uh, by uh, our counterpart in country uh, and the uh, director here uh, at UCLA. Uh, at this point, the directors of the programs in the collaborating countries are uh, all graduates of the program, which uh, makes this program. Uh, process considerably easier. So the applicants apply to the in-country program director, uh, and uh, he or she selects the most promising candidates. Uh, the, uh, I then uh, usually circuit ride amongst these countries uh, and interview these candidates uh, with the in-country uh, director. Uh, afterwards, the in-country director and I meet uh, and uh, decide on uh, which candidates uh, should then proceed to uh, formally apply uh, to the School of Public Health. Uh, the Department of Epidemiology Admissions Committee uh, then considers uh, the uh, applications and recommends to the admission, admissions committee uh, to, uh, and the admissions committee uh, decides on whether the candidates uh, should be admitted to the program, uh, and they are admitted to the program. Uh, this selection process is, is uh, multi-stepped, uh, but it turns out that it uh, is uh, very important, and it was particularly important uh, in the early stages uh, of the program to assure uh, that we didn't get somebody's uh, son or daughter or sister uh, or mistress. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, it's got to go the other way. Yeah. All right. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about uh, what uh, what the program is. Uh, in the first year, uh, the trainees take courses in basic epidemiology, biostatistics, uh, and because uh, this uh, program was originally funded. Uh, with money earmarked for HIV-AIDS, they take courses in HIV-AIDS. The second year, they take advanced courses in research uh, methodology, and that really is the emphasis uh, of this program, is to train uh, in uh, research methodology uh, and public health. Uh, in the third year, uh, the students take the doctoral qualifying exam, uh, and then once they pass the doctoral qualifying exam, they pre uh, prepare uh, and defend a research uh, proposal. Now, the, the research proposal uh, has to have uh, certain uh, characteristics. First of all, it has to demonstrate uh, an understanding, uh, an application of research methodology. Uh, it has to be on a topic that will contribute 
to the understanding of HIV or related uh, diseases and contribute to the advancement of policy uh, in the home country. Uh, and it must be approved by the doctoral committee uh, and the US uh, and uh, director from their homeland. Uh, then in the fourth year, uh, they implement the dissertation uh, research proposal in their home country with the assistance uh, of the in-country director. And in the year, fifth year, or the end of the fourth year, they come back uh, and defend uh, that dissertation. Uh, now, um, what uh, I'd like to give you some examples uh, of what uh, the dissertation topics are. I'm not going to run through all of these because uh, uh, it would take too much time. But I wanted to give you uh, an example uh, of, a, of a couple. Oops, see Daisy. Uh, yeah. Okay. Am I? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me see. Okay. I still got to go back one. Uh, yeah. Uh, for example, uh, one project uh, was done uh, in order to improve uh, the uh, quality of the methadone maintenance programs in China. China uh, was one of the first countries to formally uh, establish uh, methadone maintenance clinics. Uh, and they uh, had to expand from uh, a few uh, pilot methadone clinics to over 300 uh, methadone clinics in a matter of months. Uh, China is one of the few countries that could pull that off, uh, but they did. But uh, we did a study uh, with one of the students uh, in one of the provinces to uh, look uh, at the variations in the uh, success rate of the various methadone maintenance clinics. So some methadone maintenance clinics had uh, a retention rate uh, of only about uh, 10 to 15 percent, uh, whereas others had a retention rate of something on the order uh, of 70 to 80 uh, percent. And so uh, one of our students, uh, Lin uh, Chun Ching, I guess I'm not doing too well on this, yeah, Lin Chun Ching, uh, did a study to identify what were the factors uh, that predicted uh, the success uh, of a methadone program in retaining uh, drug users uh, in the program. Uh, and uh, uh, what she found, uh, in fact, was uh, that a key factor uh, was the staff, not surprisingly. Uh, and one of the issues of the staff uh, was their need to be recognized uh, for uh, what they were doing. Uh, and so this was translated uh, subsequently uh, into policy in terms of how the methadone maintenance uh, programs are uh, organized. Uh, we, another student, uh, let me see if I can get this thing to work. Uh, now we had a similar study uh, done. Uh, uh, okay, what am I doing wrong? Ah, there we go. Uh, in Vietnam, uh, where a student uh, looked at uh, the, the uh, problem of getting drug users uh, into methadone maintenance. The, the key to uh, methadone maintenance is, is to, to determine what proportion uh, of drug users can be successfully treated by methadone maintenance uh, and thus be uh, freed from drug use uh, which will, of course, uh, reduce their risk uh, of getting HIV, hepatitis C, hepatitis B, and a whole host of other infections, but will also reduce the crime rate, uh, because if the drug users are no longer uh, using the drugs, they will not have to uh, uh, engage in crime to, or, or sexual prostitution to support uh, their uh, drug habit. Uh, so. Uh, uh, Dr. Nguyen uh, looked uh, at the issue of what are the barriers among drug users in the community uh, to entering in uh, to uh, drug uh, maintenance uh, programs. Uh, and uh, this gave us 
some sense of what proportion of the drug users in the population uh, are actually responding to the methadone maintenance uh, programs. Uh, if I can go backwards a little bit. Uh, in the, uh, no, okay. I'm technically compromised. Uh, we also had another student, uh, let me see, uh, where is she? Yeah, uh, from Fudan, that went back to Fudan University, is on the faculty, uh, who realized that one of the things that was happening in China uh, was that uh, although uh, the HIV rate and the rate of uh, injection drug use was declining in China, as was demonstrated by another of the students, uh, there was an increase uh, in what we call club drug use. Uh, and so she did a study uh, of uh, the use of uh, club drugs uh, in uh, Shanghai uh, and their relationship uh, to risky sexual uh, behaviors, uh, which uh, was of great uh, assistance in terms of uh, designing uh, HIV control programs, uh, recognizing the rapid increase in this particular uh, risk group. Now, uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, these dissertations, but there isn't enough time, all right, we're, we're losing here, all right. Uh, I did want to summarize uh, by uh, pointing out that what we uh, tell the students uh, is that we, in fact, uh, want them to uh, publish their dissertations uh, in uh, international referee journals. Uh, and uh, as you can see, uh, China is the sweet stakes winner uh, for the number of uh, publications. Uh, but we've had uh, quite a few uh, publications uh, from the graduates uh, of the uh, program. Let me just see, I think I have one more. Uh, okay, yeah, okay, that's it. So uh, I, I, the program uh, is uh, ongoing and uh, we have uh, students uh, currently with us. Maybe if the, the Fogarty and the i students uh, could all stand uh, so we can uh, see that the students that are currently uh, in the program. And um, I, I think one of the things I like to emphasize is uh, that's the reason uh, I keep teaching, is all those students that just stood up uh, and make the teaching uh, worthwhile. So in addition uh, to the publications, uh, we have uh, staffed uh, almost all of the directors of the HIV AIDS programs, uh, including the director of the HIV AIDS program uh, in uh, China, uh, and have also, in fact, uh, trained uh, two uh, trainees who have subsequently become uh, ministers of, uh, uh, of health. So uh, one of the great rewards uh, of this program, and the great reward, I think, for all of us professors uh, at the UCLA School of Public Health is to watch our students graduate, advance in their career, and end up doing much better than we did. Thank you. Thank you.